Hi guys, it's uh, Ben with Design3 here, and I'm talking to Will Wright, creator of such legendary games as SimCity, The Sims, and Spore. Thanks for talking to us with today, uh, Will. Certainly. Uh, first question, what are some of your all-time favorite video games, and uh, you know, when did you start playing video games? Ooh, I started playing video games uh, primarily on my Apple II when I first got it in 1980, although I played a few of the arcade machines before then, like Space War and Pong. Uh, I think my favorite video games of all time, pretty long list actually, uh, Civilization, the whole series, mm -hmm. the Battlefield series, especially the early ones, uh, Advance Wars on the DS, uh, a lot of the Mario games and Zelda, uh, especially Wind Waker, which I love the style of, but it's, it's a long list. Yeah, <laughs> it could go on forever. Yeah. And how did you uh, first get started in video game development? Well, actually, I was building robots way back in the kind of late 70s, uh, very, fairly large, like things out of hydraulics and servos and stuff. And I bought my first Apple II actually to connect an interface to the robots, control them. And that's when I taught myself to program, really. And at the time, I was living in New York City, and there was one Apple store in all of New York City. And I would go in there, and I started seeing these little shrink-wrapped games. Actually, it wasn't even shrink-wrapped. They were in Ziploc bags uh, on the wall. And I bought a few of those, some of like the early Bill Budge games. and. Uh, the first flight simulator, and I'd always liked games, board games, as a kid. Mm -hmm. And one of the problems with board games is that you have to find somebody else who wants to sit there and spend four hours and read a 50-page rule book. You know, these are like the elaborate kind of strategy war games. And the idea that you could have a computer to play against was just very appealing to me. But then I started uh, looking at some of the games like Flight Simulator, and there was this whole little simulated world, you know, in Flight Simulator. The very earliest one was just vector graphics, very simple. But yet it was its own little self-contained world that I was just intrigued with. And that's when I kind of fell into it. And I started learning more and more about programming, uh, started researching simulation, things like that. And uh, at some point just decided, you know, that's what I was going to do. And how do you go about kind of planning and designing a new game? Kind of what suggestions would you have for people to try and do that? I always, when I start out on new game design, it's always driven by some interest or obsession. Really, it has to be an obsession, because I'm going to spend several years working on this thing, and so it has to be some subject that I'm obsessed with. And ever since I was a young kid, I was always obsessed with you know things for six months or a year, and I would sit and research and read books, and whether it was you know Houdini and lockpicking, or Battles of World War II, or electronics, you know, just all sorts of different subjects. And in game design, actually, I found I could still do that. I could pick a subject that really interested me, you know, whether it's ants or the way cities work, and dive into it and research it. And then I try to imagine how do I turn it into a toy? And how do I show other people how interesting and fascinating ants are, or cities, or the universe, whatever the topic is. But for me, it's always driven by my interest in the topic first. I don't even think in terms of what genre game am I going to make. I think, you know, what's the best game to wrap around ants? And then I work my way out to mechanics and presentation and, and you know, gameplay. Are there any uh, kind of common design, uh, you know, problems or technical issues that you've run into through the course of all the games that you've done? Well, every game is very different. You know, I'd say that, uh, you know, there's that kind of core interaction loop, which is always like the essence of any game. Why am I going to want to sit there and play it again? Uh, but that kind of uh, decomposes into a lot of psychology. So, you know, as a game designer, and, you know, I think the early game designers kind of fell into this over time. But now, you know, it's pretty obvious that, you know, what you're really doing is you're writing programs that, you know, occur in the player's imagination. And you're really, that's what you're hacking is the player's psychology. Uh, the computer is just an incremental step to that. And so I think that uh, that's probably the most fundamentally difficult problem any game designer faces, is what is going to make you interested, motivated, uh, what's going to have you thinking about the game even when you're not in front of it. Uh, so you're playing it in your imagination and wondering what your next move is going to be or the next time you play the game, what your strategy is going to be. Uh, that, I think, is always kind of the fundamental. And you know, nowadays, we have so many different types of entertainment that we're surrounded with, so many different options. Uh, and it's a very Darwinian environment. So uh, you have to come up with something that's compelling enough to out-compete you know, what somebody's going to be doing on the internet, or with their HDTV, yeah. or other games that you might be competing against. And uh, can you talk a little bit about you know, how you feel like how important the community that kind of arises when a new game comes out and forms around that new game, all the different players? Well, yeah, nowadays things are so connected that, uh, you know, in some sense we're not even trying to entertain individuals, we're trying to entertain communities or hive minds of people. Yeah. Uh, that's almost a different way to think about it. You know, there are these giant hive minds of communities of thousands or tens of thousands or millions of players 
how do we entertain these things? Uh, and a lot of it comes down to what are the social interactions that this game will spark within a community or to cause a community to grow up around it. Uh, you know, with this game as kind of a hobby or a nucleus. It's almost like the, you know, grain of sand that uh, is the seed for a pearl. The game really is something that builds a much larger environment around itself, which is the community. And for a lot of people, the community is, you know, at the end of the day, the most sticky aspect of what you've made. Uh, not so much the game that they're, you know, that you've actually programmed. Right. Uh, so I think pretty much everybody is familiar with SimCity. But a lot of people don't know that the idea for SimCity kind of emerged out of a previous game you did called Raid on Bungling Bay. Yeah. So could you maybe talk a little bit more about that and how that kind of progression... Yeah, Raid on Bungling Bay was the first game I did on the Commodore 64, and it was kind of a stupid shoot 'em up flying a helicopter around these islands and bombing them and stuff. There was actually a fairly deep simulation underneath it, but most of the players didn't even realize that. They were just flying around bombing things. Uh, in making that game, I had to create this world. Uh, with you know islands and cities and factories and all these things moving around, and I found that I, I actually wrote a little program that let me scroll around the world and put down roads and buildings and stuff. And I found that I was having a lot more fun building this world in that editor than I was blowing it up in the game I was making. <laughs> and so after I finished that game, I took the editor and started uh, making it more elaborate and easier to use. And then I started researching urban dynamics and the way cities actually work and traffic patterns and land value and all this stuff, and started uh, basically coding up simulations for all the dynamics that occur within the city. And uh, so basically that editor eventually evolved into what became SimCity. That's great. So there's been a lot of debate, you know, kind of recently about whether or not video games can be considered art. And what is your opinion <laughs> on that matter? My opinion is that art is a useless word. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I remember these, oh wow, these discussions started back in the mid-80s, I remember. There was an online bulletin board, Genie. Uh, and most of the, the hardcore game designers were on this game design forum on Genie. And I remember this year and a half long argument that they had way back then over whether games are art. <laughs> and the argument was just as pointless then as it is now. <laughs> you know, uh, art is what you want art to be. You know? right. uh, I think you can convey a lot of very deep uh, emotional, philosophical, uh, cultural viewpoints through games. Uh, you know, in that sense, you can do the same thing with you know, comic books or even furniture. You know? so, um, but that's why I think art is actually a pretty useless word. Okay. So, uh, what advice would you give to people completely new to uh, game development who want to get started designing and developing their own games? Well, I think prototyping is an essential skill. You know, prototyping is to game design as storyboarding is to uh, you know a visual artist or you know a filmmaker. Uh, that's a fundamental skill. I think that in terms of design, you know, you really have to distinguish yourself against all the other designers. And there are a lot of really sharp designers coming out right now. All these school programs. Uh, I think probably the best piece of advice I can give is to look for design inspirations outside of game design. Uh, I've continually found just amazing inspirations by looking at the, you know, the way architects think and work, or Japanese gardens, or you know, industrial design. All these fields, automotive design, uh, have really interesting uh, learning about the design process that can very easily be applied to games. Uh, and you know, most game designers, you know, either focus on other games that are you know out there on the market, or maybe uh, film and story. You know, those are like the two biggest areas that people get their inspiration from. But there are a thousand other fields out there that will bring you into kind of interesting areas that have not been explored. And that brings me to a final question, which we ask everybody, and possibly the hardest one that we ask: If you had to uh, sum up video game design in just one word, what would that one word be? I think you can't lose sight of the fact that it has to be fun. <laughs> uh, so fun would definitely be it. That's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks a lot, Will. We appreciate sure. it.